Thank you very much, uh, Yaman. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here at this uh, meeting. I would like to thank you very much uh, for this invitation. I would like to congratulate you for this um, 12th HPB uh, surgical meeting you are organizing again in, um, here in Antalya. And I think it's a great tribute to those pioneers who are remembered here uh, who have um, instituted HPB surgery in uh, Turkey. So I've been asked to speak with you about um, when a biliary injury occurs. We've seen the mechanisms uh, in the videos uh, from the previous speakers, uh, what to do and what would be the early approach to such an injury. Well, I was... Um, called uh, last month two times by a surgeon from the OR in a hospital in the Netherlands. And um, the first case, uh, he called me and said, well, I've done a case in the OR, um, and uh, I think I have made a mistake because um, uh, we found that we have clipped and uh, divided the common bile duct. They saw that when they took out the specimen and they asked me what to do. Um, now, there are two things you can do. You can drive up there and have a look and help them out, uh, or you can just say, well, um, leave it as it is, leave an abdominal drain, and refer the patient to us. Uh, well, apart from the um, logistical constraints of, of going away from your own hospital to go to the other hospital, uh, I think we have... Um, uh, we are quite reluctant to do that now because when you come to the operation uh, in the operation room and you see a case, um, you don't know everything what has happened. So in this case, we said, well, um, send the patient to us. And uh, as you can see here, the first thing we did was make an MRI. You see that there is a stop in the common hepatic duct. Uh, we drained uh, the patient. You see here the clips. And... Uh, the um, uh, patient was operated on the seventh day. You see here the uh, clips. Um, there was uh, no, actually, no reaction, no peritonitis because uh, of the clips. There was no biliary leakage, and uh, we did a uh, hepatico gigenostomy, as you see um, here. And that actually was a very straightforward case on the seventh day after the, um, the uh, um, initial problem. And the patient went away, went home after five days. So that was an uneventful case, a simple uh, division of the bile duct with no biliary leakage, uh, was quickly identified and repaired in such a way. Now the second patient, um, the surgeon called me and said, well, I think we have a problem here because there's, a, there's bile leakage and uh, what shall we do? And of course the, um, the, the surgeons you speak with are always very upset about what has happened and uh, so they, um, they take any advice. And what, we, what I advised was, uh, well, if you see the bile ducts open, um, uh, try to make an interoperative uh, cholangiography. And he made an interoperative cholangiography and called me back and said, well, uh, I think it's okay because uh, we, we have a division of the common hepatic duct, but we see the right and left hepatic ducts. Uh, well, I said, okay, leave a drain and um, send the patient uh, to us. And when the patient was in our center, we made an MR cholangiography. And you see uh, what he saw was actually the anterior and the left hepatic duct coming together. And this was uh, the divided posterior segment, segment six, segment seven, uh, posterior duct, as has been also shown by the previous uh, speaker, which actually was uh, um, severed here, as you see, leaking from the drain. Um, so then we did a PTC. Um, then you can visualize the lesion. This is the uh, uh, isolated duct. And then you see here, uh, the anterior and the left duct coming together. So we left the PTC drain here. We also made a CT scan because he said there was some bleeding, the surgeon, during the operation. And at the CT scan, we saw that there was a discontinuity of the right hepatic artery. So this is a, a complex uh, biliary injury with a, a high 
uh, transection in the liver hilum, uh, along with a vascular injury, and that is a patient in which we declined to do a uh, immediate repair, but that is the patient we will uh, drain and um, uh, repair after six weeks or longer, because those are the difficult uh, um, uh, repairs you can do, especially when there's a vascular injury which um, has to be settled. So when you look at the uh, bile duct injuries, um, um, roughly 20% are detected during uh, surgery, and uh, 70% in the first days after surgery. So the majority of the uh, patients uh, present um, um, with 90% within the first 10 days after a cholecystectomy. And then you have those patients who have the real strictures who uh, come later. Um, so what could you do when uh, you have an injury detected during surgery uh, when there is a cystic duct injury or there is a uh, tran uh, transaction, laceration of the CBD or common hepatic duct, without loss of continuity, then you can do a direct closure with a T-tube uh, drainage. I said transaction, but I mean a laceration. Because when you have a complete transaction, uh, then you could do a direct end-to-end -end anastomosis or a hepatic -ostomy with a Ruhren eye limb. And when there is a vascular lesion, you could do a vascular repair. But um, especially this, of course, uh, requires an expertise of a skilled and experienced uh, HPB surgeon uh, to do that. And that is not always the case when such thing happens in a hospital, in a peripheral hospital, in a, um, in, 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 in a remote part of the country. So um, even if you could, um, let's say, handle these simple type of injuries when there's no loss of continuity. Um, I think that is the best way to do that. And when there is a more complex injury, the patient should be uh, referred. So I would say that when you have an injury in, um, in a setting in which there's not experience, then the advice should be to just leave an external uh, drain, subhepatic uh, drain, and refer the patient to a biliary center. I think that is um, very important um, uh, for all our colleagues to know uh, that it, it is not advisable to, to try to uh, explore or uh, repair if you're not experienced because then you can increase the damage instead of uh, repairing it or fixing it. So the um, um, patients who actually have a problem um, they uh, present in the first days after the cholecystectomy uh, with um, very aspecific symptoms like abdominal pain, nausea, anorexia, and sometimes ileus. Uh, but the rule is that any patient who fails to recover within 24 or 48 hours should be suspicious of a biliary injury. And because many of these patients are operated into, in daycare, um, it is very important that the general practitioner is aware of these symptoms that they can send in the patient as, uh, as soon as possible when there is a suspicion of a bile duct injury. Now, in our center, in the AMC in Amsterdam, we have uh, quite experience with the management of bile duct injuries. Uh, this is of a 22-year period, 800 patients. And now, with two years um, on top of that, we have another 80 patients, and you see how they were managed, and about one-third of them uh, eventually are, um, are repaired with a hepatico gigenosomy, and the other two-thirds are uh, managed with non-operative, non-surgical uh, methods. So what is the diagnostic workup? If you have a patient with a bile duct injury, uh, I think um, uh, first and foremost is to have a good uh, image of the bile ducts and an MR cholangiography, I think, is uh, standard, is uh, the golden standard now in any patient who is suspect of a bile duct injury. Then there comes uh, ESCP and percutaneous transhepatic uh, cholangiography, which can also uh, be followed with a drainage procedure uh, so that you also actually start with your treatment. Um, a drainography, which is a retrograde cholangiography, is also 
useful when you have a drain in for some time. If you uh, visualize the drain with, uh, with the contrast medium, you can see the uh, biliary anatomy. And what is absolutely mandatory is that before you start any treatment, you should define the type and extent of the injury. Uh, and you should also be aware that there can be concomitant vascular injury and you should do a, a CT scan or an MR angiography to assess that type of lesion. So I think it's very important uh, to have a map of the, um, of the injury before you start any um, therapy. So there are several uh, classifications. We use in Amsterdam uh, our own classifications, which is um, uh, A and B for the uh, leakage problems, uh, cystic duct stump leakage or lacerations of the common hepatic duct, and um, C for the strictures, which are the late problems, and D for the bile duct division, the transaction or division or of a segmental duct, uh, which is um, um, more or less the same as the Strasberg, it's a little more detailed. Um, here the A, B, and C, and D are the leakage problems, and the real problems with the trans transection of the duct are the E uh, types of injury, uh, with uh, the E3 and E5, the injuries which are the most severe, with um, missing parts in the confluence. So um, I think it's very important to um, define the type and the extent of the injury before you institute any therapy. And as you see here, these are the, the uh, very complex and, and uh, problematic injuries in which um, the whole hepatic duct confluence is, um, is missing, as you see here. So this would be a Strasberg um, E4. Now, how do we manage these patients? How did we manage 800 and 80 patients in the past 20 years. Well, the key is that you have a multidisciplinary team to look at all uh, uh, those cases individually. So you need a very experienced endoscopist, um, which um, uh, can do minimally invasive uh, procedures with a high success rates, and they can do short and long-term stenting of the bile ducts. And that, together with the interventional radiologist, when the uh, endoscopist has no access. If you have a complete division of your trans, of your hepatic duct, then it is the radiologist who comes in um, and also can do a uh, visualization, visualization of the bile ducts and short and long-term drainage. And when there are secondary problems with the hepatic jejunostomy, they can do a balloon dilatation. And sometimes the endoscopist and the radiologist they work together. Uh, to find the routing of the bile duct and do a drainage via a rendezvous procedure. So they would uh, first start with um, percutaneously um, catheterizing the bile duct and then the endoscopist would pick up the guide wire and so they could drain the duct. And then the surgeon comes in when there is a um, hepaticogegenostomy required or uh, partial liver resection, which in our series is only rarely uh, necessary in cases with um, very complicated, long-standing uh, problems. So in those under 800 uh, patients, um, um, we see that the majority of the patients had either leakages, as you see here, um, 45, and, or a complete division of the bile duct, uh, 44 uh, percent. So these are the common lesions which are uh, referred, and most of those cases um, incurred during laparoscopic cholecystectomy uh, and also in conjunction with a conversion when the surgeon felt there was a problem. And when you look at those uh, patients, how they are referred to us, so they might come in uh, via the surgeons, the gastroenterologists or the radiologists, but in that multidisciplinary team we decide what the appropriate treatment would be, and so the patients were sent to uh, endoscopists crossover, either to surgery or to radiology, and the other way around. So there's a difference between patients who come in and who are eventually treated uh, because of this multidisciplinary management. 
And when you look at the type of uh, treatment, uh, you see that 50% um, uh, are treated with ERCP endoscopically, 10% by interventional radiology, and 33% uh, with a hepatical gigenosomy. So that would be also later in the uh, course. And when you look at the type of injury and uh, the way where they're treated, you see that uh, duct leakages, as you see here, um, they all were treated with an ERCP. Well, when you have a stricture, well, uh, initially they might be treated with the ERCP, but eventually they are treated with a uh, transection. So um, the surgical treatment ultimately is a hepatico gigenosomy, as you see here, which can also be the case when endoscopic treatment uh, has failed in spite of uh, the diligence of the endoscopist, as you see here, with many stents. And, um, uh, well, this is the usual hepatic geosmy we all know how to construct, of course. Um, the question always is, and that fits into my assignment in the early approach uh, of these lesions, when to do the uh, resection uh, operation early versus delayed, there's discussion when to time the operation. Well, I think that depends on the type of injury. Um, uh, it depends on whether there's bioleakage. When there's a patient with cholangitis, I think uh, uh, treatment should be delayed and cholangitis should first be treated with drainage and it depends on associated vascular injuries. Of course, when you have an extensive uh, injury, a type uh, E, three or five, uh, then it would be unwise to do an early repair. And if you have bile leakage and cholangitis too, and especially when there are associated vascular injuries, you shouldn't do an early repair because you need the um, hepatic perfusion to settle down with collateral circulation. So I think for every patient who comes in with a bile duct injury, you should individualize treatment according to these uh, factors and do a tailored approach either early versus uh, delayed. So when you look at those um, uh, 265 hepatico gigenosomies who we have performed, only 6% were early repaired, so within two weeks. And the majority of those uh, hepatico gigenosomies were performed later as uh, delayed uh, treatments. Only recently, in our last two years, uh, um, we tend to do more early repairs, as you see here, now it is 25% uh, uh, of patients who come in, but that also depends on the way they come in as uh, the first patient, as I saw. When you look at the um, outcomes uh, of endoscopic treatment, uh, you see that uh, for the bile duct leakages, the uh, endoscopic treatment is excellent with a 95% um, successful outcome and for the strictures, for 74%. So I think uh, for the bile duct leakages, the endoscopic approach is the best approach. And when you look at the long-term results of the surgical treatment, 265 patients, you also see that the overall long-term success is uh, very good, 86%. And there is uh, a minority of patients, 3%, who need a redo hepatico gigenostomy. So, what would be my conclusions um, about the early approach to bile duct injury? Um, when an interoperative or postoperative bile duct injury is suspected in a center in which there is no experience, the advice should be to drain the abdominal cavity and to refer the patient to a specialized hepatobiliary center. And when the patient comes in, um, um, the, the first thing to do is to define the type and extent uh, of the lesion and use MR cholangiography or CT scan to define the uh, type of lesion. ESCP and uh, PTBD are um, first choice treatments when there is uh, leakage with a high success rate depending on the type of leakage, excellent outcome for bile duct leakages, 95%, and also for bile duct strictures in the long term, 74%. And consider early surgical repair, so that's within 14 days, for a division of the uh, bile duct or lacerations in uncomplicated complicated cases where there's no bile leakage, and delayed reconstructions for real complex bile duct injuries, also after failure of ESCP and PDBB, and that also has shown excellent 
long-term results. Thank you very much.